About a decade ago, a drug swept the nation that had people turning into what many described as zombies. But what was the substance? And who was behind its creation? Well, today we'll be answering those questions. Since the turn of the 20th century, the United States has instilled hardline stances against recreational drug use. Despite this, many of these substances still remain extremely popular, with Americans being the largest consumers of cocaine to this very day, for example. Because of such interest, it's perhaps no surprise that attempts to create legal alternatives to mind-altering substances have persisted. A drug that would alter the minds of its users so much that many actually fear that it would turn junkies into real-life zombies. But we'll get to that in a bit. In the early 2010s, this drug was a staple of the mainstream news cycle. Public concern over its use was inescapable, having become so rampant that anchors began calling it an epidemic on the news. But one thing that never became clear in spite of the constant reporting was what exactly the drug was. As it turns out, that's a deceptively more complex question than it seems and it would take some time for people to figure out what was going on. Bath salts first rose to prominence in the United Kingdom in late 2009. It was primarily sold to customers online, under the codename Cloud9 and White Lightning. However, usage wouldn't reach outbreak levels until it crossed the Atlantic and reached the shores of the United States of America. Unlike its time in Europe, this new substance was facilitated through North America physically by the way of local convenience stores and head shops. The product now disguised itself with the name bath salts, along with its intended use supposedly being a plant food or odorizer. These misdirections, combined with their not-for-human-consumption label, were enough to allow them them to hide in plain sight. In fact, many of the store owners selling bath salts were not aware of its actual purpose. On top of its easy accessibility, the drug was also extremely cheap. According to one report, a 200 milligram package, which is approximately three hits, sold for as little as $15 to $20. And due to lack of proper legislation, they were reportedly easier to purchase than cigarettes or alcohol, not requiring the customer's identification, meaning it's found its way into the hands of children. By late 2010, the bath salt epidemic was in full force in the US. It felt like it had begun overnight, with the National Poison Control Center quickly receiving approximately 300 calls relating to the drug in those early months. By the next year, that number had increased to over 6,000. At first, doctors struggled to understand what they were witnessing. Free of natural aversion, patients high on the substance exercised their full strength and thus were extraordinarily difficult to subdue. It would often take several staff members to hold a single user down for sedatives. And even then, getting them under control required 10 times the dosage given to non-drug-induced patients. These junkies were clearly under the influence of something, but their scans always came up negative. To them, the circumstances were an enigma. It was only after these nightmare patients became a daily occurrence that they learned the true cause. Scientists would soon learn that there was actually no individual substance named bath salts, with the term instead referring to a variety of different synthetic drugs. This group consists of several legally available mixtures, with the most common ingredients being MDPV, mephedrone, and methylone. This may seem confusing at first, which is by design. Design. By not having a defined formula, the compound could constantly adapt as different chemicals were progressively banned. This made it good for evading law enforcement, but on the contrary, extremely dangerous for consumers. Because it was impossible to know the specific composition of the product you were purchasing, consequently, so were the side effects, with the end result being unpredictable. Two things did remain consistent amongst all bath salts, however. One, they were sold in powder form, and two, all sought to induce a state later described broadly by law enforcement as excited delirium. You see, the primary chemicals found in bath salts are central nervous stimulants, which means they can circumvent the blood-brain barrier. 
They're then at complete liberty to alter the user's mood and behavior. And because of this, the drug can trigger instinctual responses, such as fight or flight, adjust the body's internal temperature, and even induce insomnia. All of which, if persistent for long enough, can lead to intense paranoia, delusions, and potentially rage. Mark Ryan, the director of Louisiana's Poison Center, described it as all of the bad attributes of ecstasy, PCP, LSD, cocaine, and meth combined. Ironically, while conceived as an alternative to criminalized drugs, this legal high was often more dangerous than their illegal counterparts. The mixtures most frequently used in bath salts were first synthesized in the 1920s, but remained obscure for decades. That was until their rediscovery by underground chemists in 2009. Designer drugs are compounds specifically tweaked to account for active opposition from law enforcement. Despite lawmakers' best efforts, these mixtures were entirely legal in most jurisdictions, making them the perfect foundation for a new craze. Of course, the drug's mystery creator knew if authorities did catch wind, then criminalization of the ingredients would surely follow. So they designed it to be as undetectable as possible during a drug test. Combine its legality with it being readily available across the nation and it wasn't long before bath salt horror stories began to emerge in the press. We'll learn more about this after a brief word from our sponsor. When it comes to grooming and hygiene for men, you always have to make sure you're using the right tools for the job. And that's where Manscaped comes into play. They've created the first all-in-one men's grooming solution, the Performance Package 4.0 Kit. The first thing to highlight in this kit is the Lawnmower 4.0 Body Trimmer. It's Manscaped's greatest yet as it's electric, waterproof, and has advanced skin-safe technology, which reduces nicks and cuts on the most sensitive regions of the body. On top of this, you also get the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer. And the greatest part about all this is for a limited time, Time, you'll also get the Shed Travel Bag and Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs with your purchase. So to try out this amazing line of products for yourself, go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off plus free international shipping plus two free gifts when you use promo code MARS at checkout. With bath salts making their way into convenience stores across the country, it wasn't long before reports of strange behavior started to pop up. In July of 2010, a 25-year-old brutally beat his female friend to death before sexually assaulting her. He later admitted to having taken the synthetic drug. In April of 2011, an army sergeant strangled his 5-year-old son before shooting his wife and then himself. While investigating the crime scene, a jar containing 500 milligrams of the substance was found in his back pocket. Bath salts had begun to accumulate deaths under its name, and the media sensationalized its reign of terror as crime after crime was broadcast with its relation to the drug made known. This led to more awareness of the substance, causing other degenerates to go out and buy it. Meanwhile, the public was in a frenzy trying to make sense of it all to no avail. But coverage of the drug wouldn't truly peak until a Florida man stripped naked and attempted to cannibalize a homeless person. When confronted by law enforcement, he only responded with growls forcing them to shoot him in order to save the victim's life. The psychotic episode was filmed by neighbors and published online where the perpetrator quickly became known as the bath salt zombie. Even though later toxicology results gave no clear indication that the aggressor took any bath salts, this didn't stop the influence of those initial reports. The attacker's nickname would eventually come to define fear-mongering over the substance, with the drug becoming heavily associated with rumors of induced cannibalistic tendencies. This was only further reinforced when others were accused of trying to eat human beings while on the substance, influenced in part by the recent popularity of The Walking Dead and other zombie-related content. Regardless of legitimacy, public concern shifted from a mere drug epidemic to that of a full-fledged zombie outbreak induced by bath salts sold at gas stations, and this remains the drug's legacy to this day. 
By mid-2011, the growing frequency and severity of cases became enough of a concern for federal law enforcement to make combating bath salts one of their top priorities. They intended to not only criminalize the substance, but investigate its origins as well as determine the source of its mysterious breakout success. However, the journey to that point was far more difficult and convoluted than one may expect. While many states were successful in banning the drug locally throughout 2011, on a federal level it took much longer. And as mentioned previously, this effort felt especially futile as the components of bath salts were constantly changing. The DEA was finally able to ban the three most prominent ingredients by the end of that year, but even then it was only a small victory compared to the 60 other compounds identified by that point. It took time, but law enforcement eventually realized that they needed a better approach and changed their priorities. Rather than target the compounds themselves, they instead focused on preventing their accessibility through regulation, with their first step being to ban stores from selling them entirely. This alone would prove pivotal to ending the bath salt epidemic. Because a large factor in their popularity was their availability compared to alternatives, and now that the average person couldn't casually purchase the drug at their corner store, it lost most of its appeal. By 2012, the number of emergency room admissions due to bath salts plummeted, as a return to the underground ground from where it came. But the investigation didn't stop there. The DEA weren't satisfied with just minimizing the drug's impact, but were also determined to discover what led to its sudden surge in popularity. And this meant uncovering the ring responsible for its distribution across America. Their first substantial lead was found in the fall of 2010 around Halloween. This was when police responded to calls from neighbors concerning a woman on her porch firing a shotgun into the air. She later claimed to be firing at ghosts. Upon entering her home, they discovered 7 kilograms of what they first thought to be cocaine, with a shipping label address to CEC LTD. They later determined this to stand for China Enriching Chemistry, having been sent by a small company based in Shanghai. But that fact turned out to be just the tip of the iceberg. This delivery brought police to the Chinese company's website advertising that if a package was seized, they'd keep on shipping it until you got it. Considering their unit price was $5,400 per kilo, that indicated a massive profit margin. The woman was found out to be part of a drug ring that had ordered over 100 kilograms of bath salts directly from the company's CEO, Eric Chang. Investigators later estimated he'd made approximately $30 million selling bath salts throughout Europe and North America. Unfortunately, despite finding the man responsible, the CEO evaded capture. Due to Chang operating out of China, the United States was unable to prosecute him as no extradition treaty exists between the two countries. Because of this, they were only able to hold the domestic distributors accountable, arresting 10 American members of the bath salt ring in June of 2011. Chang would remain free for years, until he was arrested in November of 2013 by Chinese authorities due to an unrelated charge for producing ecstasy. To this day, he has yet to face any of the charges brought forth by the United States government, and as time goes on, it's very likely he never will. With authorities heavily legislating the sale and distribution of bath salts, popularity of the drug quickly declined as it simply became too inaccessible for most to purchase. The drug continues to remain an epidemic in other countries though, most notably spreading to Brazil where its legacy as the zombie drug lives on. So there you have the story of bath salts, and even though it's not much of a problem in the US anymore, you never know if there will be another drug that comes into the picture that's even worse. But until then, we'll just have to wait and see. So until next time, thanks for watching.